Okay, what we're cutting is, this is for a drill rig, and actually we still need to clean this up a little bit so we can use it for a test piece. But uh, we're cutting the box. We're making an adapter for the people that will go using this box end that's in here. And we can't use this one, of course, because this is a piece that they need. So that would be the piece that goes over this male. Now, that has a pretty good taper to it. The taper is two inches per foot on the diameter. I just got through cutting this inside. I'm cutting it on the back side. I'm turning the machine backwards so it's rotating this way. My cutting bit is over here. And the reason for that is when you're using your taper attachment in the back of your lathe, let's just look at this and explain the taper attachment. Some of you will have them, some of you won't. It's a taper attachment, and on this machine, I, we don't do tapers here all that much. Uh, I used to do a lot, and it just it goes in cycles. Um, but this hooks on at the back of the lead screw is where the taper attachment does. And can you see that here, the whole assembly? You come around the other, okay. And it runs on this bar. There's a adjustable set of ways here so that it runs true on this bar. And as you move your carriage, the taper attachment, and we can even watch that a little bit. Um, I kind of wanted to make a point, but we can do that differently too. So as we move along here, you can see also, first off, see how it's not moving? You can see this is the x-axis, and I'll go a little further, and it will there. Now it started moving. And that is the combination of the slop in the components there, the, any slop that might be in the cross slide lead nut, uh, the, the screw, lead, um, screw, not the nut, well, the, the nut is part of it too, <laughs> but the, the bearing on the end. All of that, everything that's slop. And as you can see here, let's see, I am done cutting this taper. So if I zero this out, let's zero that out just for fun. Let's see how far we got to move before we get the cross slide to actually start moving. You've got to go quite a ways, even with a two inch taper. Yeah, we had to move almost an inch lengthwise before we got the cross slide to start catching up with cutting the taper. Now, the other thing that happens is, which is why I'm not cutting on the front. If you're cutting on the front part of, of it here, front part of a taper going this way, and I'm doing it, making a cut, the taper attachment will be pulling away from the cut. And so as it pulls away from the cut, it's now loose. It possibly could come further. You could have the, the uh, since it's pulling it out of the cut, there's the looseness allows it that it could push back more. So you're not solid. It, coming in this direction, what's happening, and I'm feeding from the inside now, from the inside, it's pulling into this cut all the way. Everything is tight as it pulls into the cut. It could, you could have a movement that pulls it in more, but it's, that's not the normal thing that's gonna wanna happen on the lathe. The normal reaction from the cut is to push away from where you're cutting. And even if it doesn't push away, it generally will be steady until you get into the cut. Until it, in, until it pushes in. So by pulling in, it's a, kind of a hard thing to maybe understand. But as you're pulling into the cut, it keeps everything tight so that you have a more consistent taper. And we're gonna put the thread in. We'll do that from the inside also. Now, I didn't want, didn't want to set it up twice. The taper on this for the thread to be cut on could have been cut in the other direction and pushing it out, it would have had 
maybe a little bit of waves, not quite as pretty of a finish. You can see I got a pretty good finish on it there. But it wouldn't have really mattered for just the clearance area for, a, for the thread. The thread is, when you cut the thread on these, you leave a flat on the top. You're not letting it come up to a sharp V. There's clearance in there, so because there's going to be dirt and different things. This is when this gets used while they're supposed to clean it. Uh, it doesn't always happen, and inconsistencies one thread to another. They're designed so you leave a pretty good flat on the top of this. The spec on this, I'm not exactly sure what this thread is. It's not fully matching anything in the specs that I've got for drill threads, so. It's, but it's close, it's close to one of them. And that one lists that it should have um, a sixteenth of an inch flat to forty thousandths of an inch flat, depending on where we're looking at in the charts on the top of it. Uh, the piece that I've got over there, the male piece is measuring about a seventy thousandths flat on the top of it. So you, you fit them so the V fits up but you leave this extra flat so that they can, they can move a little bit to find their location. And you also set them, when you make them, you want to make them so that it's just, the thread is starting to get tight at the same time that it comes up to the shoulder. Um, this particular taper attachment here too has been finicky for me. I found out why a while back, and that is because the taper attachment is not traveling true in this direction with the lathe. The actual attachment travels at a little bit of an angle uphill. So, and, I, and the original foot, this is the foot for anchoring the taper attachment. The original foot for this was about 16 inches out and it had a pivot in it. And I never really liked the pivot because it was loose. And I don't know if this is the original foot. I don't think it is. I think this one's actually off of another lathe but was close to the right. I don't remember. We lost the foot for this machine for a while. We just plain lost it. And I don't know if this is the one not sure. I don't, I, I don't know if this is the foot we found it again or whether this is off of a different machine. I had to refit it a little bit so it clamped better on the bed here. Um, and the other thing I did, I went down and I just got a long piece of all thread for this so that the all thread can bend a little bit to make up for not having flexible joints to make up for the incorrect part there. All in all, you're going to find that taper attachments, um, they work. They will do a job. Generally, you got to let them move a ways before they come into the right location for where they're cutting. This one here, this machine has an interesting thing. When I bought this machine, it had the taper attachment on it, taper attachment working. And the taper attachment is screwed on here. If you notice, there's also some tape tapped holes back here. So if I had ordered the machine without a taper attachment, they pull the screws out here and this goes direct to the carriage. So then when it's mounted to the carriage, you don't have a problem um, of the taper attachment movements, because that can happen to you sometimes too. Uh, a lot of times I'll take, if I have a machine with a taper attachment, when I'm not using it, I'll dial it in so it's straight. So if it moves, it doesn't move the cross slide because you could have this get bumped and it can cause you problems a lot of times. What I really like that I did on this particular machine here is I realized that I could just leave the taper attachment here. I pull those screws out when we're not using the taper attachment <clears throat> and I put the uh, bearing for the cross slide directly to the carriage. I just move it over since I can unbolt it here and I move it over so that it's directly where it would be on a machine without the uh, taper attachment so then it doesn't matter at all. And I can just pull this rod out, 
<clears throat> and we can go on as if this was a machine without a taper attachment and it just rides around until we have to activate it again. It takes a little bit of time. If we were doing tapers all the time, we'd leave it set up on there. Um, another thing you can do on some of them or you can modify it is you can lock this so it can't move. That's another way you can do this is, is put a lock on here. Some of them have locks. Um, but all these extra pieces, it's just less of a problem for errors coming into what you're doing if you do put it there. Also, you'll notice, working with taper attachment again, your readout doesn't really do you any good because we don't know it's moving, <laughs> you know? We come up here to make a number and it's moving. So now uh, if I readjust it, that doesn't necessarily make it move right now. That just made it loose. So you really have to be using your dial when you're using your taper attachment. You can use your DRO for setting it, so you, which is real handy, where if you don't have that, you have to put an indicator on here and see that I moved this distance and then how far it moved in or out at that point. It's nice to be able to set the DRO like we can do here. And um, this should be, if we go Z, Enter that at zero, enter that at zero. Once we, well, actually, we got to get to where we start moving first. Otherwise, there's no sense. Okay, they're both moving. So now we go zero, zero. And then if we move three inches, we should get about a half inch on the other one. It's one, two, and as I come up, two, three inches. And I didn't get this one dialed in perfectly this time. Came up to three inches, I'm at 502. So I'm off just a little bit from what it really should be. That would be, it's off two thousandths of an inch on the diameter in three inches. Um, that means it's one thousandths per side in three inches and it doesn't matter. That's close enough. I didn't feel like fussing with it anymore. Um, and that is the same, a half an inch in three inches, one inch in six, or two inches per foot, which is what the taper on the diameter is specified for this. That is, that's pretty standard. They specify in some charts a whole bunch of different ones for drill, ring, drill uh, in this general range. This uh, first part here is a counterbore that you put in so that it clears the imperfect threads on the pin. So that's clearing for the pin. And the pin may have a straight diameter there or it may be all tapered. This particular one is tapered right up to the edge. And they have the smallest part of the pin at 2.240 for this, the approximate size. And there is a spec that calls for 2.240. I didn't see anywhere that they had a call out in my information for this here, but I made it 250 because generally stuff like this is made to a normal inch diameter and 10 thousandths clearance would be normal to have on something like that. Uh, for the threading, originally I was thinking that I would use this one inch diameter bar and put a high speed steel piece in here, but it's going to be too close. I can see as I'm moving along with the extra movement of the taper attachment, it's, um, I'm going to end up using a different bar. I'm going to braise two pieces together to get my clearance. I'll be cutting from the inside out, but uh, I just need more clearance to get the thread to start where I want it to inside there without, without rubbing on the other side of the hole. We've only got an inch and a quarter hole in this. And uh, you, it's just not a lot of room to move for your threading. We'll show that later. I'll have this set up at a different angle. I'll make a new tool for it. Taper attachment will be set the same. There's something else that I was thinking of here. It's been, been several decades since I've cut any of this drill tooling. Some of my friends here in town, they, they do quite a bit of them. 
for whatever reason, it hasn't came to me too much. If I go to the uh, hollow spindle, we get it finished, we'll probably end up doing more. There's a lot of jobs that I just tell people it's not practical for me to be doing it, especially on bigger stuff for to drill tooling. I just tell them go somewhere else, just because uh, most of the time other people can do it cheaper, cheaper, easier. This one's fairly small, so it's not a, not a problem as far as us doing it. Most of them people want you to cut are six, eight, 10 inch diameter. And it's, you can't put it inside of your machine like we could with the hollow spindle. It's not that convenient. You, we waste a lot of time. Um, yeah, I was gonna talk on this, on this uh, compound here. There are other things you can do. One of the things you can do for taking up slop in that so that it's not a problem as you reverse direction is you can mount an air cylinder on here that preloads everything. So a um, friend of mine has tried that recently. He had some problems with it. I think he pushed his cylinder in the wrong direction because again, you don't want your air cylinder taking up load so that the air cylinder is making the cut. You want the solid iron to be making the cut and the air cylinder to push against it to keep it out of the cut. Takes, takes a lot of little thinking of all this stuff and then it's about impossible to really explain it to somebody until you play with a, a taper attachment. So they're good to have on a lathe. They're not perfect. Um, a lot of times they take longer to set up than what it's worth. If you're cutting a short taper, just go ahead and use your compound. It works fine. Uh, the thing that your compound won't do is it won't let you do threading though because you can't have your compound and your lay threading angle. Now, for one that's not a steep angle like this, what you can do, you can take and move your uh, tailstock over and turn between centers. That doesn't help you for cutting an inside taper, but if you have an outside threaded, say you need to cut a piece of uh, threaded pipe thread. Pipe thread's fairly flat. It's three quarters of an inch per foot taper. So you can take, if you need to cut a regular pipe thread and you can offset your tailstock towards yourself and then your, you have a taper is gonna be formed because you moved over and your piece is gonna taper. So you'll get your taper, your threads, you can still thread it. Your travel on your thread is off just a little bit but pipe threads are forgiving and it's, it's been done a lot of times. I have not done it, but it is the standard. You'll even find it listed in the machinery's handbook if you have an old enough one, where they show you doing that and calculating how much inaccuracy there is because your movement is now along the angle instead of normally you have your pipe thread and your movement of threads per inch is straight on the axis. So when you cock it, you make a taper, but your movement is now moving on the taper. So it's moving on that hypotenuse and it's slightly different movement, the threads per inch than what it's supposed to be. It works, it, you can get by with it. it it'll seal up and, and function. What I'm thinking about doing, and I haven't looked at it, we can look at it right now. I just uh, might do it on this other lathe over here. I will do it on the hollow spindle. Uh, I'm not sure 